Hey guys, this is Meeker here. I wanted to talk about the beta since it has come to a close and the next stop we have the actual release of New World Eternum or basically New World 2.0. Uh, I wanted to talk about the honeymoon phase that we're kind of in and it seems like a lot of people are in. Uh, some common pitfalls with that but also like what New World has done really really well this time and uh, where I think it's kind of going. So, New World Eternum, this is going to be coming out on October 15th. The beta just ended yesterday, which is the 15th, so we have one month of basically hype for AGS building for this beta, uh, or for this uh, release from the beta, and then we from there we get to see how it actually does. In terms of the actual numbers from the beta, uh, these were pulled off of stat tracking sites, and it seems like New World's beta went pretty well. The actual like total number of players that were playing at a certain periods of time was peaking over 30k if you split this into eu and na you could see that eu and na were both peaking at about 10k players you have console on top of that it's and it seems like there will be a, a good amount of players that are playing for this game when it actually comes out i don't think everyone got into the beta or like that wanted to play uh, the actual game when it comes out is going to be on this beta so I would, in considering the beta got to about 30k, I believe, near its peak, and that's like considering people from both regions, I think it's safe to say that there will be about 50 to 100k players playing when this new world uh, tournament actually comes out, which is a very solid amount of players for a game that's been kind of given a second lifeline uh, with the power of AGS and a, a bit of marketing, so to speak, in terms of kind of rehashing uh, the old. Uh, the beta did a very good job at kind of catering to that level 1 to level 30 experience. I think veterans and people that have played New World will argue that that level 1 to level 30 experience honestly is the best part about New World. When you get to like level 30 to level 65, it can get a bit grindy, but that entry point, everyone really likes it, and it seems like everyone was just having a good time at the end. Uh, a lot of people were very, very active on Reddit recently. It seems like the sentiment from... The community as a whole has turned from a kind of a sour standpoint to a little bit more uh, hopeful and kind of hoping that the future will be a bit better here. Uh, it seems like the game will likely pull in a good amount of players. I think that the question more so is how is that kind of mid to end game looking and is that retention going to be there for that? And I wanted to talk a bit about that mid to end game uh, experience today and then at, at the end of this I'll, I'll kind of go over the the more pessimistic take that some people are having as well as just sort of a, a news roundup for all this but it seems like people are very happy with like how it went the leveling experience was better than it used to be uh, you have the ability to kind of choose a starting kit which kind of gives you a little bit of an advantage in some aspects with the different archetypes that you can select from and then the actual like grinding for levels experience isn't as tedious as it was before with like really cheesy optimized routes with going to like town boards and mass spamming crafting and all this like kind of weird stuff that like just to avoid the leveling experience because it used to be so poor in the past. Now it seems like people are actually taking time to enjoy the game and kind of play it for what it was. So that's the, been the, the best part I think about this new road beta experience as well as like Fresh Start and New World just tend to mesh really, really well together because that early, early game is so good. Like, people really, really like the early game in this game. The question more so is, like, okay, once we get through this beginning experience, like, where do we end up? And it, also the question is, well, how many hours do you end up when you get to that experience, right? Because for some people, if you're taking your time really smelling the roses going through this beginning of the game kind of taking your time to explore, that might be 100 to 200 hours before you reach the mid game. It might be 500 hours before you reach the end game. And for people who are more experienced, like myself, who have leveled seven characters at this point, it takes me about 40 hours to reach what I would consider to be end game to the point where I'm able to compete in end game level content because of optimized routes. So it really depends on like who you are and like how you kind of choose to do your experience in New World. So the, the, the question more so from, uh, I saw some people posting, is like, hey, should I buy this game if I'm only worried about the campaign, if I only look at the campaign? I think the, the question is like, how much do you want to smell the roses and really explore everything within the game? I think it's very easy to get 200 to 500 hours out of this game. And for that price point, it's a very good value. 
Like you go see a movie in the theater nowadays and it's like a $15 ticket for Deadpool and that, that movie's like two to three hours, right? So if you like take that as a basis of value, like, yeah, you're going to get more than 10 hours out of this game. It's re really, really good from that early game experience. The question more so is if you want to like, if you are invested in this game, you want to continue to be invested in this game, how will this game do? And I think that's uh, where there's a little bit more questionings with this game, but I just wanted to kind of get that out a little bit sooner in this video because I think it's very easy to like look at these opinions and like just focus on the sour approach, but there's some things that New World is doing very, very well here. So in terms of the actual end game experience, there are a lot of new items added. Uh, there, the the common take in terms of like the, I wouldn't say pessimist side because this is this is more of like a realist side in terms of perspectives. Is all these items that were added have magnify as the main stat line, except for ones that drop from these schematics at this end game level. So seven twenty five is that new gear score max. Most people are going to be wanting to use that gear score max. Although as we discovered on Steam or on stream like two or three days ago. Uh, it turns out lowering your gear score of certain things could actually boost your damage and reduce the th damage that you receive, which is something that was a bug in the past and still apparently is a bug in the game, which is unfortunate. But taking that bug, which honestly is more of a mechanic at this time because Aegis doesn't seem to want to patch it out uh, aside, the actual uh, schematics that you can earn will allow you to get gear that does not have Magnify. The reason why Magnify is an issue is because magnify can not be selected for each individual piece you could put it towards one stat or you can put it as a split hybrid and most people want to do a combination of three stats in new world and because people want to do a combination of three stats in new world uh, magnify just mathematically doesn't make a lot of sense to to go for in terms of having a heavy amount of pieces with magnify so for example if you want if you want to have strength dex and then con like most people will try to get to 200 con and then with this up and coming patch you have a total of 650 stats right so because you have 650 stats the other two that you want evenly split between your strength and like say dexterity for something like greatsword so for that to happen you have those 450 stats you want to distribute that evenly but you're not actually going to be able to do that with magnify so you end up with a mathematically unoptimized stat split which is something that some people are kind of upset about there are some builds where this matters more than others so like for example musket was a, a build that some people prefer to go like i don't know like maybe 50 to 100 con and all the rest in a uh, dexterity in. and then some people go like five con and then with that kind of build you're not actually going to be able to utilize all your stats for a lot of these builds that like tend to go like three ish stats like magnified tends to cause problems in and there doesn't appear to be uh, an addressment from that from AGS's point of view with this next build of all, all this gear that is coming out that is new uh, if you look at any of the artifacts those are all magnify I think it makes sense to run that on an artifact like artifacts should have magnify but something like uh, living mind this is focused so this is like a pvp specific drop so that one's good uh, but if you look at any of the raid specific gear so like the hope light mass uh, I think some of this is crafted this is from the other raids so there's two raids that can drop this and both of them have magnify and that's where you start to get into these questions of like, hey, how could I actually get my stat split to work the way I probably want it to work? And I have an old calculator I can dig up for this that can kind of help people with that aspect. But uh, it seems like Magnify might once again be an issue here. The other noteworthy thing is while this schematic does get around the issue, the, around the, issue, the raid's only doable for these drops once a week. And then this schematic has a 1 in 200 chance of dropping. And then that thing that you craft is bind on pickup. So effectively, the distribution of these schematics will be heavily gated. There will likely be a large price tag on these from PvP sweats because they want to get their optimized split with the least amount of magnify possible. But the problem is, is they can't distribute these items to other people in the community, which effectively uh, makes it so that crafting art like in terms of armoring and crafting in terms of like weapon smithing is not really a viable a trait from an end game economy standpoint since all that gear is bind on pickup for the most part here so that's something that i would be looking for ags to address between the beta and the live game but from what we know and from what ags has kind of s had in the past where you have uh, the game first come out and closed beta and then there's the open beta 
and then there's an NDA build that is already out for the final game of the release. And considering that it's not in that NDA build, according to sources that I have, uh, I would say this is unlikely to get fixed in the near future unless AGS or unless there's enough community outreach from people that have played the beta to AGS to fix this as soon as possible. So that's like one of those things where I think that could hamper the experience for those kind of players that are trying to do that raid. Uh, another thing too is that those end game uh, resources are time locked so you can only do it once per seven days for some people i think this is actually kind of a good thing because then people can't get too far ahead and it sort of helps people that are maybe a little bit too sweaty in some areas but i think overall people want to be able to do the content at their own pace in games and it, people don't like it when other companies kind of pace the game for themselves that being said i from a AGS like if I was a project manager at AGS this is 100% what I would do as well because AGS's end game content is relatively minimal this time so they really need to stretch it out and this is a effective way to stretch it out um from a customer perspective I think this is annoying because to me this is just screaming why did you guys focus on the beginning of the game for the last three years and not focus upon the medium or end game much at all uh and like the things that they implemented I don't think in reality will be much content but i have more of a pessimistic standpoint on the, the end game at this point because stuff has been soured for the long haul here but again going back to that it depending on what kind of player you are this game is still worth it for the amount of time that you'll put into it it's just more of the will you enjoy it after a certain point or will you be upset because it was so good and only to be let down that's like the mode where i'm in uh, as as of someone that's played this game for a few thousand hours over the span of a couple years so it's like it's a very good game and then you get to a point and then it's like this game could have been so so good and it's still in theory could be so so good but it's just it's been so long that i don't think it's realistic to really hit that potential and we're likely to only hit that with lord of the rings which we've seen some tweets from people uh, saying that they are leaving a uh, new world now to focus on quote unquote other important things at ags so i assume that some of those people that were working on this are now moving over to that lord of the rings which also uh, shows that there's likely less commitment to future developments once this build gets out. I wouldn't say it's like a full cash grab, but it's like it feels cash grabby from a, a high level perspective. On like from if you think about people leaving to focus on other things, AGS is kind of putting content out right once a year, uh, trying to get some of that cash flow back in, and then kind of uh, seeing where the dust settles from that perspective. I don't really blame AGS for that. I think it makes sense from a job security standpoint, especially with recent layoffs that are going on within video gaming companies around the industry. Uh, but it's something that is noteworthy nonetheless. Uh, so now starting to get into that was more of like kind of the mid game, like kind of post honeymoon phase of New World. I kind of want to get into some of the ugly stuff that came out from the beta that is, again, in one of those spots where I don't know if this will really be addressed. Uh, so the major thing that a lot of people have looked on, I think this the other clips actually better at showing this, is there's a new target lock mechanic that was introduced into to New World, and what this does effectively is it gives players literally aimbot within PvP, and the compensation for this. So you could see how a trick trick in this case, uh, shout out to trick trick, um, uh, is able to track these enemies with complete pre precision. And the consequence of this is he's not able to hit headshots, which I want to get into in a bit, uh, but he's able to basically hit every shot and only has to worry about movement mechanics and not actually aiming. So the idea behind this is that you are going to be able to do more consistent damage, but you're going to hit less hard, right? Uh, because of that, that headshot multiplier that you're missing. But the headshot multiplier on most weapons nowadays is actually kind of low. It's about a 1.3, and I believe you can get to 1.35 damage reduction from headshot multipliers with certain sets, mostly in heavy. Uh, with light, I believe it's 1.15 right now as a base, not including uh, con stuff, which I believe will raise that a bit. A medium, it's 10% over that. Heavy is 10% over that. What this basically means is that crit damage multiplier isn't much of a factor. The other noteworthy thing about crit damage multiplier and how it works in New World is it's not a multiplicative factor on top of everything else. This adds to base damage, which recently was nerfed for all ranged weapons, because what AGS did is they got rid of ammo, 
Ammo used to be a separate multiplier that was 20% uh, if you used the highest level ammo for in terms of a damage multiplier across everything across the board. What AGS did is they got rid of this 20% ammo bonus. So if I have like the factors, right, that you're multiplying by to say they're C, they, what they did is they got rid of this factor and then they added it into this other factor. To people who are not familiar with math, this makes logical sense. And this is something that like, sounds like it should work how you would think it would work but for people who are more familiar with math you're realizing that you're turning a multiplicative into an addition here and what that basically means is 20 percent is not equal to 20 percent and you're actually getting a damage nerf to musket blunderbuss any weapon that has uh, ammo involved at all at about five percent value uh, for in terms of all these factors multiplied together. So, I mean, it can be a little bit higher than that. That base damage is really high, but you're really looking at a 5 to 10% damage nerf to all these uh, weapons that have ammo involved because of this change. One thing that I recommended to AGS to accommodate for this because this other bucket wasn't used was to actually uh, increase this number here on the musket, like the damage number that would be according to this. So you could see 87 base damage here. What I was hoping that they would do is they would turn this number up which would effectively make it the same. It would not be a nerf and not be a buff, but what they instead did is they kind of took the easy route. And even though that number says base damage, there's a difference between base damage and base damage because this game is wonderfully coded and it actually ends up being a nerf. Uh, with that aside there, the auto aim, I think is kind of received poorly in terms of the community or the PVP community. I kind of understand why it exists, but like, there's soft lock and then there's hard lock when it comes to games and like when P a PvP standpoint, hard lock is like almost always a no go. Uh, unless you're like a game that has auto aim and you're basically a hard like a very casual MMO, which I guess is what New World's trying to become. Uh, this is kind of a no go to the point where there's a clip. Let's see if I could find it here. I think I have it up. Uh, where Trick Trick was able to win a duel. With his headset over his eyes so he literally can't see because he's just able to hit abilities and not really think about what he's doing and there's another mechanic in here that i want to unveil in a clip that oh, or in a second that allows him to win this which i say mechanic it could be a bug but knowing ags this change was very likely done on purpose and is very uh impactful so for people who didn't really see it. I'll go through it again. This part right here shows the mechanic. And then you could see that this bow and arrow player, normally on the live version of the build, they'd be able to create distance and they'd be able to walk away from this sort of engagement with their dodge roll. And then from there, the SNS player would not be able to catch up as easily because most SNS players are not playing light, they're playing medium or heavy. But what AGS has done is they added a mechanic where if someone's stand bar, which is kind of hard to see here, your stand bar goes from like zero to roughly a hundred. If your stand bar is anywhere less than a hundred, so say it's like right here, and you get hit from a stagger effect or a stun effect because stuns will stagger, you will not be able to dodge until your stand bar regens back to full. So the what this effectively means is any ranged weapon that doesn't have the ability to block doesn't have the ability to counter any one that goes for a stagger effect in this sort of situation for someone that has the ability to block i guess you technically could block the other thing that you could do is you could press an ability so you could try to use an ability while you're using an ability you will generate stamina and then so you can wait for your stamina to get back to full that way and then kind of create distance but this idea of punishing light players in a spot where they're like not really... Well, I say light players, but it really punishes any player. It's just light's the most prevalent example because light players are notorious for wanting to create distance. And disabling the ability for light players to create distance seems uh, harmful in a lot of aspects to that level of PvP. It also sounds kind of annoying from a PvE perspective. Like if you're focusing on a boss and you're like a tank... And then you, you dodge once to get out of an effect because it's going to take a ton of stam damage. And then they clip you or something like that. And you're not actually able to dodge your next effect. So you think you can dodge, you don't dodge, and then you get hit by the boss and you maybe die. Like that sounds like a frustrating experience to me. And that's just part of like the, the New World Endgame experience now. Um, so I think there's kind of some bittersweet things there. Uh, in terms of other things that are kind of coming to the game... Uh, 
I want to save this other one for last because it's like, I don't know if it's as strong of a point. There seems to have been an effort to sort of hide the player count. I, I say sort of, but um, as of like a few hours ago, this is something that we noticed in terms of the neural database side. And it seems like AGS has disabled the ability to track player count per server. So you're not going to be able to know which server is actually the most popular anymore and which one's dead. Uh, so that to me is a very big red flag and is something that is pretty awful to be honest. Because there are a lot of people who tend to want to go to popular servers because they want to play with other people. And by disabling that, I imagine there's a way for AGS to have a more evenly distributed number of players and maybe that's better for AGS overall because they don't have to worry about should this server be at 4,000 players or 5,000 players because that's what they're doing on the beta now. They're trying to push that number up from 2,000 to 4,000 and then now from 4,000 and maybe 5,000 players on one server. They're trying to get a more evenly distributed amount of players amongst every server by doing this. Uh, the other aspect to this is it just makes it so it's really hard to track how well the game is doing. We can still see how many people from like Steam play the game overall, but you just can't see per server. And I think taking away that visibility is just overall a, a net negative to the community as a whole. And I'm surprised AGS is kind of going through with this. There has been stuff like this has happened in the past and it's been more on the bug side, but this happening right after the beta uh, and patching that through to the live servers seems a little bit more than coincidental and I would argue is something that is likely done on purpose at this point. There is some other stuff too that has come out, uh, like there's been some fixes that have been rolled out to the live thing. The noteworthy thing here is you'll notice this bullet down here, fixed an issue with some players not receiving refunds for their first lighthouse. as kind of another red flag for New World. First Light was taken away from New World and replaced with the Elysian Wilds over a year ago. And this fix is just coming out now. Uh, which, it, honestly, like, it's not worth that much. Like, it's worth, like, coin and stuff. But, like, really? Like, a year later? Like, at this point, like, they might as well have just not fixed it. It's just ridiculous that it's taken this long for something like this to be fixed. And then... The other noteworthy thing, too, is while a lot of this Reddit stuff is positive, I would encourage people to look at uh, who they're reading from the Reddit in terms of, like, is this a real person or is this not a real person? And the only reason why I say that, and I'm not saying this person, like, you can judge if this person's real or not, um, but this, there is a post from 13 Souls that said they generally had a great experience, and I hope the dev team sustain what they have here. I'd never even heard of this before before it was advertised on the xbox store so yeah definitely yes for me and i'm really looking forward to the launch and they're going to be buying the game the noteworthy thing here that you'll notice is 13 souls account has posted once was created today and this is their only post and i'm not saying like people can't be new to reddit but like there's been a history of ags trying to kind of bought their way to success, bought and bought. Like, for example, on YouTube, they paid to be at the top of the list for their short and an embedded thing to drive the view count up significantly and then turned off uh, dislikes and comments and all this other stuff to, because people were kind of shit talking on the game, to put it politely. And this is something that, like, kind of came out as well. And it's just, like, not everyone that is posting here is posting with the, their best interests, I would argue. Like, you could take it if this is a real person or not. Do you believe this person? Like, a lot of people, I think, are, like, pretty happy with this game overall, at least with the first bit of the game. Uh, the question more so for me is the mid and end game, and the mid and end game for this up-and-coming patch is going to be focused on uh, grinding in terms of the raid, which is gatekeep gate kept to once a week i'm going to be focused on grinding the pvp area which is also gate kept to once a week and the, the only way to get the end game gear that you actually want is from the raid it's not from the pvp area because the pvp area crafts are rng versus the raid crafts are targeted drops so it doesn't really make sense from a mechanic standpoint to stick around to the pvp area because the pve raid just offers exact drops in terms of what you want and overall is just a higher quality loot.
So with that being said, uh, it seems like a lot of people are going to be enjoying this game on fresh start, but the question will be, will the game survive two to three weeks? From AGS's perspective, I don't think that matters. They make money off of when this number goes up. They don't really have an incentive to keep people around. The incentive is for skins, which have been reduced recently in terms of their value because of transmogs, and will also be trying to keep people around for server transfers or when people are tired of fresh but want to keep their character and move it to a legacy they'll be charging you a nice $15 for that. So there are a few things to keep that incentivize AGS to want to keep people around, but I would not, uh, historically, I would not say that they're likely to want to support the game outside of the next three-ish months. And then after the three-ish months, we'll have to wait another nine, nine months before major content is revealed, assuming New World is still in the scope of things that AGS wants to uh, kind of flourish under. So with that being said, let me know your guys' thoughts on the beta. Uh, am I being a little bit too pessimistic in terms of the, some of these takes, or am I right saying that the game is really good for the first couple hundred hours, which is good value for most people, and then when you get to the end game, when that honeymoon stage is over, uh, the, the game kind of falls off a bit. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.